Hello, and thank you for your participation in ACI's fourth Lunch and Learn webinar. We appreciate your interest in today's topic, germ reduction at home, cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting. My name is Jen Coolidge, and I'm the project director in the education department at the American Cleaning Institute. As we have in previous webinars in our Lunch and Learn series, we will be recording this webinar. Shortly after the webinar ends, we will be sending the recording link to everyone that registered. But just a few reminders before the webinar begins. The audience will be muted until the question and answer segment, but if you have any questions during the presentation, you can type them in the question box and they will be answered at the end of the webinar, time permitting. This webinar will provide you with information about cleaning practices, such as what the differences are between cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting. Ways you can identify areas in your home where germs breed and the level of clean needed to reduce them and how to access ACI's educational resources. From all of us in ACI's education department, we applaud the work you are doing in your schools and communities. Some of the organizations that have joined us for today's webinar include the Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America, 4-H, as well as community stakeholders and health professionals from across the country. Through partnerships with organizations like yours, ACI is able to educate consumers and future consumers about best cleaning practices to keep families and communities healthy. Before we begin, I would like to tell you a little bit about me. Since joining the Education Department at ACI, I've played a role in educating consumers on a variety of issues, from sustainable living, hand hygiene, and the proper use and storage of cleaning products. My understanding of the cleaning products industry and the issues and concerns facing consumers continues to grow every day. To learn more about me and the rest of the ACI Education Department, please be sure to visit us online at cleaninginstitute.org. Now that I've introduced myself to you, please allow me to introduce or reintroduce you to the American Cleaning Institute. The consumer touches our products literally every single day, whether it's cleaning their laundry, cleaning their home, cleaning their families, cleaning themselves. We have a chance to really see our products in use in everyday life. Since 1926, the American Cleaning Institute and its members have been there, innovating effective and sustainable products that add value, convenience, and comfort to our lives every minute of every day. In all the spaces we call home, wherever we learn and grow, cleaning products are there to help keep us going, promoting our health and safety, and helping us find joy in the people and places that matter most. What drives the industry to innovation is the consumer, giving them products that really become experiences. And when you clean that baby blanket, you put a wonderful fabric conditioner with a wonderful fragrance in it, and it's soft, and it feels great, and it's clean. You might smell that again, and it takes you back to a very loving, caring moment that you had. Cleaning products are an integral and sustainable part of our lives, and the industry is committed to finding effective solutions that have a minimal impact on the environment for a future where more people can enjoy the things they love. The industry really has a drive and a passion to continue to help consumers' lives be cleaner, safer, and more satisfying. For generations, ACI and its cleaning product manufacturer and supplier members have set out to do more than help make the world cleaner. They've set out to make it a healthier place for better living. Today, we will be focusing on something that is on everyone's mind as we head into the holidays and the cold and flu season, germ reduction in your home and the differences between cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting. So the question that I've been asked is, why is ACI giving a webinar on germ reduction and the differences in cleaning? Well, the answer is simple. The reason we're having this conversation is that the cleaning products industry understands the correlation and levels of clean and that by reducing germs in the home, it can help prevent people from getting sick or having a family member get sick. ACI and organizations like the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, are working tirelessly to educate consumers, caregivers, partners, and stakeholders about germ reduction, proper hand hygiene, and how best to clean, 
sanitize, and disinfect your home. To that point, ACI's website has valuable information that you can use in your home as well as share with others in your schools, organizations, and communities. So let's get started by talking about what a germ is. The term germ or germs refers to microscopic bacteria, viruses, fungi, or protozoa that can cause disease. Germs can spread when someone sneezes, coughs, or even talks. The illness passes into the air and can be breathed in by anyone nearby. People can also become infected by touching something such as a surface or an object with germs on it and then touching areas on their face around their mouth or nose. Infectious flu viruses can survive on tissues for only 15 minutes and like cold viruses, infectious flu viruses survive for much shorter periods of time on hands. However, some viruses can survive on hard surfaces for up to 48 hours. According to the CDC, there are many types of germs that cause many types of illnesses, including the common cold or flu, foodborne illnesses, Lyme disease, hantavirus, or even the plague. What's important to remember is that germs can make people really sick if not properly treated. To put it in perspective, here's a statistic that will help you understand exactly what the impact germs can have in the home. In a recent CDC report, it stated that an average of 52.2 million cases of the common cold affect Americans under the age of 17 years old every year. That's a pretty impressive number if you think about the impact that it has not only on a family, but also in schools and communities, especially if it could have been prevented. So now that we know what a germ is, let's talk about what the definitions and differences are between cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting. Everyone has their standard of clean and ways to clean. Keeping this in mind, do you think you might be missing a few key components in your cleaning regimen or best cleaning practices in reducing germs in your home? ACI has developed a resource, Daily Practices to Protect Children in Your Care, that was developed to help child care providers reduce the spread of germs, as well as to give them a better understanding of when to clean, sanitize, and disinfect. This simple-to-use guide defines what the differences are between the three types of cleaning, as well providing a timeline that will help caregivers keep children in their care healthy. If you care for children in your home, this resource is free and is available on our website for downloading under the Clean Living section. So what does it mean when someone says that something is clean? Well, cleaning is defined as physically removing all germs, dirt, and impurities from surfaces. This process does not necessarily kill germs, but it does lower their numbers and the risk of spreading infection by removing them. Most of us spot clean our homes or clean up whatever messes may arise throughout the week, reserving a deeper level cleaning for the weekends or whenever time permits. However, it's important to remember that while cleaning something may remove some of the germs, it probably won't remove all of them and that any germs left behind will not be reduced without sanitizing or disinfecting them. Now that we know what the meaning of clean is, what does it mean to sanitize something? So sanitizing is defined as reducing germs on inanimate surfaces considered safe by public health codes or regulations. Sanitizing can reduce or kill 99.9% .9 of germs that are present. Some areas where sanitizing may be appropriate would be any surface where a food is prepared or that comes in contact with food, such as kitchen counters, cutting boards, cooking utensils, stovetops, and possibly the kitchen floor. These areas should all be sanitized to prevent any germs from being transferred to other surfaces in the home. For example, the dining room table. So we've talked about cleaning and sanitizing. Uh, let's move on to what it means to disinfect. Disinfecting destroys or irreversibly inactivates infectious or other undesirable bacteria, pathogenic fungi, or viruses on surfaces or inanimate objects. Some areas that you may want to disinfect in your home are door and cabinet handles, kitchen counters, toilets, and other bathroom surfaces. If you have children in diapers, the diaper pail, changing table, crib, or potty chair should be on your radar as well. 
And just one more thing to remember in this process when you're thinking about the differences in cleaning. There are those instances where you will need to clean an area before you can sanitize or disinfect it, meaning that there could be multiple steps involved in the cleaning process, not just one. One way to ensure that these steps are identified is to make sure you are using the cleaning products correctly and by reading the cleaning product label and following the manufacturer's recommendations. Now that we've identified the differences between cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting, we need to identify areas in your home where germs are and the level of clean needed to remove them. So I want you to take a step back and I want you to look at your home through the lens of what areas in your home could be a haven for germs. I think you'll be surprised and possibly horrified. In order to identify areas of your home where you will find germs, you need to first understand the conditions that germs need in order to survive. Did you know that they need nutrients, water, and an environment that is conducive for them to grow? Keeping that in mind, bacteria can adapt to pretty much any environment, as long as the barest of these conditions exist. Now what may also surprise you is that in an average home, this kitchen sink harbors more than half a million bacteria, which is more than 10 times the amount found on an average toilet seat. The reason for this startling statistic is that the sink basin is rarely clean to the degree that the toilet is. I mean, come on, just think about it. Uncooked fruits, vegetables, knives, and cutting boards coming in contact with raw meat that's loaded with pathogens? If you add water and don't properly clean the area, you'll soon find that you have a germ population the size of Los Angeles. In a recent blog published by ACI's Clean and Happy Nest, the kitchen sponge was called out for being the yuckiest thing in your house, which should come as no surprise. If you think about it, the average kitchen sponge is always coming in contact with food and water, making it a perfect place where germs can grow. But don't panic. There are ways to keep the germ population in check on your sponge. Go to ACI's blog for ways you can clean your sponge and a timeline for when you should toss it. You can find the blog at cleanandhappiness.org under the Cool Nest section. When you're looking at items in your home that you want to clean, one of the things that you need to consider are shared spaces and surfaces that are frequently touched. Keeping in mind that germs, depending upon where they are, can have a lifespan from 15 minutes to 48 hours. Best practices will have you first clean the area and then determine whether or not it needs to be sanitized or disinfected. Make sure that you follow the directions on the cleaning product label and properly dispose of any materials, especially if they are a single-use cleaning product. If you are using cloths to clean, rinse them thoroughly to remove any lingering cleaning products and dirt. Then wash them separately from other items to prevent any cleaning solution residue from coming in contact with clothing or other items that are waiting to be laundered. So here are some additional steps that you can take to identify areas in your home where germs may be hiding. Step 1. What areas of your home are being used on a daily basis and meet the three requirements that germs need to survive? Step 2. Are there areas in your home that are not used on a daily basis but may still be a place where germs can grow? A good example of this might be your basement or a rarely used guest room or bathroom. Keep in mind that just because it's not being used doesn't mean that germs aren't there. And step three, while not scientifically tested, many of us know that if something doesn't smell right, it typically isn't. Odors are oftentimes a good indicator that germs are present and that the item or area needs to be cleaned, sanitized, or disinfected. Some things to take into consideration when you think about the best ways to reduce germs in your home is to think about what's going on in your home. Things like, do you have young children or school-aged children? Are you caring for someone who is chronically sick or possibly undergoing a medical treatment? Do you have pets? Depending upon what's going on will determine the best practices approach for identifying and reducing germs in your home, as each one requires a different approach. For example, if you have children in school, one thing to think about is that when they come home from school every day, they're bringing germs with them. Whether it's on their backpacks, gym clothes, school books, or writing tools, germs are right there. 
And one step you can take to reduce germs is to make sure that your child gets into the habit of washing their hands properly in school as well as at home. ACI has developed a resource that provides a guide as to when and how to properly wash hands and it can be found on our website under the Clean Living section. Another step you can take to reduce germs is to regularly clean out and clean the backpack. Check the label to see if the backpack can be tossed in the washing machine or possibly the dryer or if it needs to be air dried once it's been washed. If it can't be washed, wiping it down with disinfectant will reduce germs. For many Americans, caring for a loved one in the home is a daily way of life. There are ways to provide them a level of care while reducing germs to keep you and other family members healthy. Here are a few tips. When caring for someone who is chronically ill, it's best to avoid having people in your home who may also be sick. Ask everyone in the home to cover their noses and mouths with a tissue or with the inside of their elbow whenever they cough or sneeze. Make sure that the used tissues are not left lying around and are immediately disposed of. Another step you can take to reduce germs is to disinfect surfaces that may be in the room where you are caring for the person. Lastly, wash bedding often, taking the necessary steps to wash them in such a way as to reduce and destroy germs. Well, one of the most overlooked places in your home where germs can be found is right under your feet, literally. Pets oftentimes bring germs into the home, depositing them wherever they flop. ACR recommends the following practices in your home to reduce germs and protect yourself and your family from getting sick from your pet. Vacuum your home regularly, especially areas where Fido or Fluffy hang out in order to keep up with the pet hair. Did you know that brushing your dog regularly outside will keep the amount of hair you need to vacuum up to a minimum? Another way to reduce germs is to wash your pet's food and water dishes daily as they can be magnets for germs. Also keep their bedding clean and try to limit the amount of time they spend on the furniture. Good luck with that. Don't forget to always wash your hands and have your children wash their hands after coming in contact with your pets, their stool, litter boxes, and food and water bowls. By now you know that germs are not just confined to the kitchen or the bathrooms. When identifying areas in your home where germs may be hiding, you're going to have to think outside the box. I don't know about you, but it seems like every family member in my house has at least one cell phone, if not two. I mean, who doesn't love their cell phone? But did you know that if they're not properly cleaned, your cell phone can harbor germs that can make you sick? If you're like me, you use your cell phone every day. It goes from your pocket or your purse to your face. You hand it to your child to play a game, put it on the kitchen counter while preparing food, and leave it by your bed at night. Everywhere you go, your cell phone goes, and germs go too. By following ACI's simple tips, you can keep your cell phone clean. Before you begin though, check the owner's manual for any cleaning instructions specific to your device. Now we all know that dirt, oil, or germs from hands can mark up cell phone screens. To reduce these germs, wipe the screen at least daily with a microfiber cloth. Who knew that that fancy case you bought to keep your cell phone clean can trap germs and grime along the edges? Take the cover off weekly and use a disinfecting wipe on the case both inside and out and let it dry completely before putting it back on your cell phone. To keep the cell phone keys from sticking and to extend its life, keep your cell phone away from food and drinks, which for many of us is going to be a hard thing to do because we all multitask. Again, be sure to wash your hands before using your cell phone to reduce germs and minimize grime. Now let's talk about germs that lurk in and around your home office and computer equipment. Whether you're using your kitchen counter or kitchen table as your home office, or you have a separate area in your home set aside, germs are present. It's important that your home work surfaces are cleaned and sanitized regularly, especially before you prepare a meal or sit down to eat. One other area that gets little attention is the computer or laptop, keyboard, and mouse. Check the manufacturer's recommendations for timeline and best practices for cleaning and disinfecting. You can find many of the resources for best cleaning practices for these areas in your home on ACI's website in the Clean Living section. 
And since we're talking about germs that make their way into your home from the dog or children, let's talk about another place where germs are hiding. Your car. For those of us that spend hours commuting to and from work, maybe providing a ride to other commuters, to rescuing cats and dogs out of shelters on the weekend like I do, or maybe you drive children to school uh, or out to school events, cars could be considered a home away from home for many. From family trips to eating lunch behind the wheel, not recommended, it's no wonder that cars can get smelly, which is a clear indication that germs are present. Hot spots in your car would be anywhere that you touch with your hands, including the steering wheel, radio knobs, the gear shift, cup holders, and car seats. Cars are often overlooked for disinfecting and deep cleaning. But one way to reduce germs in your car is to keep disinfecting wipes handy so you can wipe down common areas regularly. One of the other things you should be doing is using hand sanitizer. Before we talk about which cleaning practice is best to reduce germs in your home, one question that ACI is frequently asked is do products that you make in your home work as safely as those that are sold in stores? So when thinking about making your own cleaning products versus buying them in the store, I want you to think about a couple of things. Where did you get the recipe for the cleaning product that you'll be making? Has the recipe been tested for cleaning purposes? And by whom? Is the tester certified? Or is this recipe from someone who has no expertise in the area? Once you make the cleaning product, do you know what the correct amount of the product is that you should use? Are you aware of any safety precautions for mixing the recipe or combining it with other products? Will you have the specific product recipe available if you need to call the poison helpline if there is an accident? Do you know how to treat an accident exposure? Are there any special instructions for safe disposal of it? How long can the cleaning product retain its cleaning properties before it expires? Which, if you think about it, could actually cost you more than if you went to the store and bought a preformulated product. And to that point, you need to give careful thought as to what cleaning products and cleaning equipment you will need to get the level of clean done that will save you both time and energy. As a reminder, always check the label of whatever cleaning products you are using and follow the prescribed directions for maximum cleaning benefit. Also, make sure that when you're tackling any kind of cleaning job to remove anything that may be preventing you from reaching all areas that need to be cleaned, meaning declutter. So for cleaning, you will need hot water, an all-purpose cleaner, clean cloths, a broom, dustpan, dust mop, and wet mop, as well as scrubbing sponges. And these are your go-tos. As previously mentioned, the friction of cleaning something removes germs to achieve a level of clean. For sanitizing, you will need a cleaning product that is specifically formulated for sanitizing. For disinfecting, the same thing can be said. You will need a cleaning product specifically designed and formulated for disinfecting. Again, be sure to follow the label directions when you're using cleaning products. Something else I want to touch on. Oftentimes, when we clean, we really don't give much thought to the condition of the equipment that we are using to clean. It's important to take a moment and look at how clean the mop head is or whether it's time to replace it. When was the last time the vacuum cleaner was serviced? Has the scrub brush seen better days or is it time to replace that too? These are all questions that need to be asked. Otherwise, you risk recontaminating the area that you're trying to clean with germs from a previous undertaking. Something else to consider is whether or not the cleaning products that you are using have an expiration date and if the expiration date has passed. So just a quick recap. In this webinar, we identified what germs are, what they need to thrive and survive, and what the differences are between cleaning, sanitizing, and disinfecting. We have also identified areas in the home where germs are, and areas that often aren't thought about, such as backpacks, dog beds, cell phones, computer equipment, and cars that may be harboring germs and the level of clean that is needed to reduce them in those areas. As promised, here are the educational resources that you can use to reduce germs in your home. And just a quick note, additional materials that are free and available for downloading are on ACI's website under the Clean Living section. 
If you need to order other educational materials or if you have any questions, you can always email us at education at cleaninginstitute.org. So I'm going to open the floor up for questions. And if you have a question that you'd like to ask, you can type it in the chat box and uh, click on the icon or unmute your mic or raise your hand and I will um, unmute you. Uh, well, ahead of the webinar, we had a few questions that came in. Uh, the first one is, what is the best way to clean a kitchen sponge? Well, lucky you. The answer to this question was recently addressed on our new blog, Clean and Happy Nest. As we all know, sponges can quickly become havens for germs. Some people believe that using a microwave is the way to go, but using the microwave can be risky as the size of the sponge and the amount of power in the microwave are variables that would influence how long you would need to zap the sponge in order to kill the germs. A better way is to soak the sponge for five minutes in a solution of one quart water to three tablespoons of chlorine bleach and then let the sponge air dry. To be safe, you should replace your sponges every two to eight weeks depending upon how frequently and roughly they are used. Another way to preserve your sponge's life is to use paper towels whenever you are cleaning up food spills. The next question is, which is better, plain old soap or antibacterial? Washing your hands with soap and water, no matter what type of soap it is, remains the most effective way to prevent the spread of harmful germs that can make us sick. Personal cleansing products intended to inhibit uh, or kill certain bacteria on the hands or body are generally called antibacterial soaps or washes. Depending upon their active ingredient and specific formulation, these products can be effective against the bacteria that can cause odor, skin infections, food poisoning, and intestinal illnesses. Good to know. Uh, another question that came in is disinfecting wipes, sanitizing wipes, hand wipes, how effective are they and safe around a food area? I would say that the effectiveness of using wipes depends upon whether or not they are being used properly and according to the product label directions. It's important that you only use hand wipes for your hands and not to clean in an attempt to sanitize or disinfect. It's also important not to use sanitize and disinfecting wipes on your hands. Keep in mind it's important to keep food from coming into contact directly with a wipe and best practices it's always best to properly wash your hands prior to preparing or handling any food. Throughout this webinar I've mentioned ACI's new blog Clean and Happy Nest so please be sure to go to cleanandhappiness.org and subscribe to it. Don't forget to register for the upcoming webinar on Wednesday November 8th that will help you get your home ready for the holidays. And if you missed any of our 2017 Lunch and Learn webinars, you're in luck. Recordings of the webinars can be found on our website. Simply search for the word webinar and you'll find them. Thank you again for participating in ACI's webinar, Germ Reduction at Home, Cleaning, Sanitizing, and Disinfecting.